welcome back, Farm to Taste with Chef Cindy Gershon. Hello, welcome to the classroom. Make sure you raise your hand and ask questions because <laughs> you know we're both teachers here at Mount Dabble High School and our goal is to change your palate. And boy, do we have a couple of great guests today. We've got Alan and Alan. So Dr. Alan, tell us about you. I'm Dr. Alan Green. I'm a pediatrician, child health advocate. For the last decade or so, I've been an adjunct clinical professor at Stanford University School of Medicine. And years ago, my wife and I started what was the first physician website in the world. So answer questions for people about their health. And over the years, I figured out that nutrition is central to good health. Absolutely. That's why we have him on the show today. And show us what you got there, Dr. Allen. We have one of my books, Feeding Baby Green, which is about how to teach kids to fall in love with great food. There's something I call nutritional intelligence, which is the ability to recognize and enjoy healthy amounts of good food. And it's something we learn, it's something we cultivate, and this is well, how to do it. That's what we're teaching in the classroom. Right. That's what we're teaching. But we have another Alan another here, Alan. and Alan, tell us about you, Alan. We I'm pulled a... you off the field. Oh yeah, they pulled me right <laughs> off the field, fresh off the field, actually. I'm a student athlete. Uh, I attended Syracuse University for three years and uh, went to Youngstown State for a year. And um, yeah, athletics is a big part of my life, and nutrition is something that's uh, been helping me uh, stay active and uh, do well on the field and off the field. So, you know, I'm just getting used to that, and I'm a learner and a student today. So, I am going to be asking you in just a few minutes how you hydrate, what kind of sports drinks you do, what you eat before a game and after a game, but we're also then going to cook just for you today. So we're gonna <laughs> feed you, are you ready for that? Yes. Okay, Definitely. what young person doesn't like to eat really good food? Did you bring your appetite? Oh, that definitely, I'm ready it's to It's on, right the now. appetite is on. There we go. So um, I'm gonna be kind of following what you're saying, so I think, I think the first meal of the day, what is an important meal of the day? Uh, Breakfast is a Breakfast. really important meal. It's particularly important to get right. Uh, if you eat late in the morning, that's okay with me. Early in the morning, it's okay with me, but eat real food. Okay, so get your book, okay. bro, read to me the book. We are on we are. page 57 of this amazing book Hold that he has book put together. Hold the book up again so people yes, do not forget. I know, do not <laughs> forget, oh, I, I get just, the book. I just want to, and I know I always interrupt, that's one of my character defects here, <laughs> is I interrupt, that my greatest quality. Everyone that I know that gets pregnant tells me that they're having a baby or thinking about having a baby. I either get this book for them or I tell them to get it. And all of my high school kids, because these are the future parents, mm -hmm. it is so important that they start greening themselves right. before they, you want to lay a good foundation yeah. for this child. Where the soil our kids grow out of. Oh. Could you Ooh. just cry? No, I love good. that. That's good. Oh, that was so That's good. good. Yeah. That was so good. Okay, so right, we're we gonna start on here. Page 57, and we're gonna make an apple cinnamon oatmeal. Okay, so Very we're exciting. starting here with the oats. So first things first, you didn't just use water in those oats, did you? No. Okay, what did you put in there to cook the oats to make them so beautiful and creamy oh, and rich? Do you see how beautiful and creamy and rich that is? I used um, unsweetened almond milk. Unsweet, that's genius. Sweet and I like it. Because we have cheese and other things that we're doing today. Mm -hmm. So I like to move my proteins around. Mm -hmm. And it also is educating the palate so that you're more open when you go out to eat that you go, I don't, that's foreign. Nothing mm. should be foreign. If it's good for you, we should expand our palate and look at nut butters, look at nut um, milks different things that you can nut oils, mm -hmm. like we use avocado oil here. And it. maybe you could speak just a second about the difference between seed oils and, and good oils, like extra virgin olive oil. Sure, a lot of the oils, um, well first of all, Fat has often been demonized. Too much fat in food is bad. Yeah. But fat that's in real food is great. And if we're gonna use an oil, you want something that comes straight from a real food. So avocado oil is great, olive oil is great. Um, extra virgin. Extra virgin, extra virgin olive, virgin oil. olive oil. 
But the things that are chemically processed that are, often end up being oils that aren't as good for your body. And a lot of the seed oils out there are very high in omega-6 fatty acids mm -hmm. that can make your body inflamed. Uh, yeah. So I would think twice about those and move towards real oils. In a little bit, we're going to talk about a salad you can make with no oil that's yeah. delicious. You're going to love that. Okay, so I just sauteed up in just a very little bit of the olo the avocado oil, mm -hmm. these apples. So I'm going to put them, and I mm. put a little, you see how they're not brown? Um, I'm going to hold just that They're soft, there. nice mm -hmm. and soft they're nice and, and soft, warm. but we put a little mm -hmm. lemon juice mm -hmm. because that tang mm -hmm. and, oh, that's going to be so delicious. Okay, so what else does it say to put on my apples It here? is calling for some toasted walnuts. I've got them right here. Where's my walnuts? Right there, um, right there. Right beautiful. There. Are you good with nuts? Yeah. You're good with walnuts. nuts? Okay, I'm going to sprinkle these right on the top. And uh, do you have any allergies? No. You're good. No. Okay. Allergies? Okay. Okay. What else? Um, uh, some raisins. I've got some raisins right here. Now, dentists aren't crazy about children eating raisins because it gets stuck in the teeth. Can you talk to us about that? I'm going to put just a little bit. Yeah, a few raisins. It's a real food, dried real food, and I'm not concerned about it. But you do want to clean your teeth afterwards and drink some water afterwards too. We'll get to more water Hydrate, later. Hydrate, hydrate. See water, why water, water is so good for you. Okay, I love then, it. Okay, yeah, we're not quite done yet. We're going to do a little bit of sesame seed and a little bit of sunflower seed. Oh, right here on the top. Ooh. So could you talk to seeds, why seeds are good for you? Seeds are wonderful themselves because they have a lot of the healthy fats in a good form for you and also loaded with minerals. Okay. And tasty. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm not done yet. Alan, you know what's missing. What's that? What's missing from your apples? Oh, yeah, we need that cinnamon. Yeah. We yeah. need some need that. cinnamon. Well, it's on there. It was on there. Where? It was on there. I did. Where? Oh, oh you know what? I thought it was. Oh, you, uh -oh. it's in the sink. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> okay, it's okay. The They're bringing kidding. some cinnamon right now. Cinnamon. Cinnamon, 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 cinnamon from the side. Cinnamon from the side. We will okay. not deny. Wait, you're you, for it's called right? yeah. cinnamon just, apple. Just toss, toss, toss the that cinnamon. right to Alan. <laughs> just toss the cinnamon right Make to sure Alan. Make sure it's covered, though. By the way, the person <laughs> tossing the cinnamon is my wife, Cheryl, who actually created all three of the recipes from the book that we're going to be using there today. There you go. And started the all website. All right. There you go. I love this cinnamon because it's a cinnamon mill. Mm -hmm. You grind it fresh oh, when you do I it. Oh that. my God, yeah, stop cool. it right now. I didn't even know that existed. That's so cool. Life hack. Oh, yeah. oh is it? Oh, it goes this way. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, are, yes. you, are you liking this already? Yeah, oh, it's cinnamon is good for you in a lot of ways. It lowers oh, blood sugar, it helps control that, and helps your thinking. It's so if you have high blood pressure, this is like especially. this yeah. this meal for high blood pressure <laughs> is a way to lower blood pressure. It, the, yeah, the oats are great, but it's real food in general does it. So speaking of blood pressure, when I started in pediatrics, there were about mm -hmm. zero kids in the U.S. that had high blood pressure. And today, as we're together, yes. there are millions of children <laughs> with high blood pressure in the U.S. Uh -huh. And it's related to how they eat. Yeah. And there's is a lot good? of talk. Wait, is yeah, it works. Good? Good. Okay, Cheryl, there's a thumbs up, Cheryl. <laughs> yeah. If you're out there in the in the audience, two thumbs up on that. Thumbs okay, up. set that to the side because we got more food coming. One more bite. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> We're looking for palate change. Where I'm, so I'm going to put this all together over here because you know the crew's going to want to eat the crew. this. The crew. Yeah, we got to take care of our people. That's right. You know, right. everybody loves food. They love okay, the I'm food. putting it all in here. It's all going all in right. there. All right. Yep. All the Wait, rest of the, the goods are going in there. Everything. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, don't mess it up. So what is the next thing that we have that you should have in a meal? So you're going to start off with a dinner. I always right. have a set. Oh, this well, no, no, no. We start. Oh, okay. okay. We're going That's, to the next wait, meal. No, no. We're going. But whenever I have a meal, I always try to have a salad in front of it because it helps get the palate and the juices going. Mm -hmm. But it also is kind of a filler so that you don't eat a lot of the other things that maybe aren't so good for you. That's so, right. and it's loaded, this salad is loaded. Well, tell, tell us what it's loaded with, Doc. Well, all kinds of things. Let me say first that there's a lot of people confused about what to eat. And they hear that high fat is bad, it's okay, you want low carb, you want paleo, you want Mediterranean, you want vegetarian, all these different things. With all of those, the really key issue is eating real food, whole food. The closer you can get scratch cooking is one of the best things you can do for great food, and it tastes better too. 
So that's one of the things about salad is it, it makes it very easy to be real food. Okay. The one thing that's not often is the dressing people pour on it. It can be some of the worst oils, high sugar, other stuff you don't want. Right. So, so this you salad. Just, you, like Dr. Lustig had said, you take that, that wonderful greens and veggies and, and things, raw things, and put it in your salad, and then you take and you put dressing and you just made it a dessert. Right. That's exactly right. You turned it from, you're getting your vegetables, but it's, it's a dessert. Because Some olive oil is great on there, loaded with polyphenols and great, but this salad is done with no oil at all. Okay. Instead, we use avocado, and you just toss let's it enough it. that let's it gets it. all over. Mm. So let's see. Okay, so this is actually on page 115 of his book, and it's called Naked Salad. I like it. So I'm as you go naked from now on, we're there going go. naked. You know, I like go it. Go naked. That's what we're saying. Go naked. <laughs> and by the time you're done tossing it, you shouldn't see any of the avocados, avocado anymore. Um, okay, so what he's doing, he's doing a lot of things are happening here. So we got yeah. avocado, we've got um, greens, uh, we're gonna do a little bell pepper, we're gonna do some sweet pepper? red onion. Red bell pepper, because you know what you're getting in here is all those colors. Right. Mm. And those colors are where the phenol, what are they? Polyphenols. Polyphenols. And what does that do for blood pressure? And that's helpful for blood pressure as well. Okay, we got some red onions thinly sliced here. We've got some cherry tomatoes. Um, oh, we were going to do some walnuts, so not all of those went into there. Get That's some okay. from over there. Yeah, we can use some uh, of those. Oh, we're going to steal some of your we'll walnuts. We'll just take a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I like it. Just, yeah. just, I like just it. Just a little bit. Because um, that's little, a good fat. Yeah. That's a good fat and a good fiber. Very good fat. Oh, look at you go. A little He's grated really Parmesan. mixing it. A little grated Parmesan. Oh, and that is the real and stuff. We grated that. I love that. Oh, my gosh. Fresh grated okay. is awesome. And I've got some peas there, too, if you'd yeah. like to throw in some peas at I the end. I love peas. Add some extra protein. So green peas are protein on top of it. So you've yep. got your fat, you've got your good fat from the avocado, you've got your protein from the peas, and that's a good starch too. Mm -hmm. And starch so, is, all these things help feed the gut biome, right? That's right. And that's really important for our health. The bacteria that live in our gut are, um, do a lot of things for us. One of them that most people don't know about is they change what foods we like. So if you do a good job feeding your gut biome, it'll help you want healthy foods. Wow, so the more processed food and sugar you eat, the more your biome craves that, craves that which makes your palate not want to eat good food, exactly. which makes you feel bad. What are some of the side effects? Because I know there, we've got a lot of high school kids and moms and dads watching this that have young athletes. All children are young athletes and young right. scholars, right. right? All children are athletes and scholars. So you want to eat in a way that makes you look good and feel good, but also achieve your full potential. So when you're eating food like this, you're giving yourself the ability yeah. to be able to sit and listen. So we now understand that what kids eat in childhood, in school, um, changes their bodies in lots of ways. Because everything you see when you look at somebody is built from the food they ate. Mm. And every thought you have, every pass that you catch, or what position you play? Uh, defensive back. Oh, that, that's a really good one to catch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, comes from the food that we eat. That's where the energy comes from, that's where our thoughts come from, that's where our bodies are built out of. And what kids eat changes what they look like, it changes how much they weigh, it changes what their skin looks like, it changes how tall they're likely to get, it changes how, how well they do in sports. How tall they're likely yeah, to get? Yeah, how you eat. Well, you can see when people immigrate to the U.S. from other places, they often get taller because of more protein. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Than their parents were. And um, so it changes how tall they're going to get. It changes how well they perform in sports, how well they perform on tests. It changes mood and behavior. Um, and that's from the gut biome does that? That's the, the food, food that we eat, eating? but all those related to our food and to the gut biome. And it wow. changes how likely you are to get sick at any given time and how quick you're likely to get better if you do get sick mm -hmm. and how likely you are to get a chronic illness. And kids today, more than half have a chronic illness of some kind. Mm, and wow. it changes what you eat as a high school student changes how likely you are to be healthy as an adult and how long you're likely to live and be healthy and strong. So it really comes down to food. So they're saying that this generation will live less 
than what our generation is going to live. It can certainly be that way, but we can turn that around. Okay, so give that a shot. Naked salad. Yeah. Naked salad. Is that you saw how we made that simple Simon, huh? Mm -hmm. Now, if he wanted, to, this is something you would eat before a game, right? You would eat. No. And if he wanted to add a little salt to that, that would be where he would get electrolytes <laughs> from, right? Yeah. Adding salt to your food, to real food, is a great way to do, is a that. Great way to do that. Can we maybe have a moment to explain what we mean by real food? Um, I know that, like, for us, it seems really obvious. Right. Like, we could, you know, it, it, a lot of people struggle with what exactly that means, and so I had my students mm -hmm. look up the definition of food. Okay. Have you looked that up lately? Not lately. What's you, the <laughs> uh -oh. So what it says is food is a nutritious substance that you know people in, or, or animals eat or drink that provides for growth and maintenance of the system. Okay. Wow. That's deep, right? So with that frame of, of reference, you could probably begin to think about, a, can I say words here? Can I say names of products? Yes. Okay. Think about a Dorito. Would you consider a Dorito to be food? No. Look, <laughs> so I, I looked at this, what they were saying. It's like, you are what you eat. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And I guess today I'm a nice green and colorful <laughs> salad. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. I love so it. So those people right, right there, Alan, right. see that? Tell them. Tell them. Tell them what you are. I'm a salad today. <laughs> a beautiful one. A naked salad. A naked, a naked salad. So, <laughs> Even better. Uh, Alan, um, what Wait, is, so we, ha we, okay, we have to ahead. finish this okay. about what real food is. This is the whole point, having clarity and understanding right. for people about yes. knowing what food is, what its purpose is, and how to identify if what is on their plate is not real food. So healthy soil, mm -hmm. it all starts with soil, mm -hmm. produces healthy plants. Mm -hmm. And Sometimes those healthy plants make healthy animals. It could be us mm. or it could be other animals that we eat. Yep. But anything that comes out of the soil and goes to plants and then is fed to animals is real food. Okay. But if it's made in a factory by, by extracting or, or adding chemicals to it, then it gets less and less like real food. You want to eat things that are come from plants, not made in plants. Right, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. More and more and more. More right. and more. And okay. there are some packaged real foods, sure. but most real foods are things you can find at a farmer's market or in the produce aisle or, or the outside of a supermarket. Nice. I like it. I like it. So if you're making the real food into something else in your own kitchen, that's a, that's a that's type great. of processing. But that's, okay. that's culinary processing. Okay. I like cooking. That. And cooking is great. It's the, people, it's the things that are made with ingredients that aren't in a typical kitchen right. that, that are or the that concern. You can't recognize or you can't what recognize it is. What they it are. was made right. in a factory or in, yeah. a, in a lab somewhere. Right. Yeah, that's what's what's not good. Um, For people who are really interested, there's a classification called the NOVA classification that you could just look up online, mm -hmm. and it will tell you whether food is minimally pro uh, real food or minimally processed or restaurant processed or the ultra processed foods, which are the problem. Yes. And the ultra processed foods now make up two thirds of the calories kids eat in childhood. Mm -hmm. So, so we, oh we God, have please. to make a shift. We are like making Frankensteins out of our children. We don't know what they're going to be like right. and how they're going to act from what everything we're putting into them. It is game change. Game change. Yeah, it's a ticking time bomb. It is. It is. And, and pharmaceuticals will not be able to keep up with this. I'm sorry. They won't. It's true. It's true. No, you're exactly yeah, right. Or we won't be able to keep There, there won't be anybody. <laughs> no man will be left standing if we don't change. Um, I wanted to, um, and maybe you can ask him, what does your coach, being at Syracuse, playing football, what, what do they recommend that you drink before and how do you hydrate? It's right in front of us. The best thing ever on earth, some water. I love that. <laughs> so, and how often do you drink sports drinks? 
Not very often. Probably, it's, um, like, let's say we're in the game and it's halftime. We'll probably get some Gatorade for halftime or something like that. Like but a full bottle, undiluted? Yes, it's a little small bottle. It's about this size. You know, we don't get a, a big Do one. Do they dilute it for you or make tell you to dilute it? It's, it depends. If they make it in the um, coolers or the jugs, they can dilute it a little bit. But mm -hmm. other than that, it's all water in those, those little bottles. Uh-huh. So what do you think about if you're just a high school athlete and you're just playing baseball outside or if it's not, you know, 100, you mean, what, what do you suggest just for PE at school or just hanging around school? Would you be drinking? Oh, I can give you an example. This is great. When I was in high school, what a lot of kids used to do, we used to carry uh, milk jugs filled with water and just drink them throughout the day. Uh, uh -huh. so, that's just basically what I did, just carry that around, and whenever I'm thirsty, just take a quick little sip. And it's like the that. gallon, the yeah, gallon, the big gallon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Run around with that all day. <laughs> yeah, a mm -hmm. lot of kids think that to perform better, they have to have the sports strengths, they have to have the electrolytes, and don't know that they're loaded with sugar or corn syrup and, and often yeah. artificial colors and other things that are there too. Right. Yeah, but it's not necessary. I mean, didn't we have athletes before we had sports drinks? I mean, you know, yeah. I, Jesse Owens. I don't think Jesse Owens had a sports drink, you know. No, you're, you're no. I mean, right. I think water he had water. Way, way better. Way I think he had water, and I don't even think he had Doritos or, or McDonald's or anything. Like, oh, I'm sorry to mean to say that, but um, I think that he was eating good food. Yeah. You know, I mean, you look at all the athletes. It's not like sports has just been invented just in the last 20 years. Uh, that is true. Mm -hmm. But having said that, some, so for like what you were saying, it's almost all water, right? right? But at halftime, in a big game, and you're really working out hard both halves, sometimes a little bit of electrolytes can be helpful. Right, we need it. Uh, yeah. A little bit. We need just a little bit. And my favorite, if somebody's going to do that, is the WHO electrolyte solution. And it's under a whole bunch of different brands, but it's a little packet you put in, and it's clean electrolytes without all the other stuff. WHO? Yeah, rehydration solution or electrolyte solution. Have you seen that? I never heard of it. It's the first time. It's, it's oh, really oh, good. Oh, okay. Take and note. And the military often uses that when they're in But it doesn't yeah. have the sugor, and it doesn't have right. the coloring, and you right. just add WHO to your... Yeah. Could you add pickle juice? Pickle juice is that's good. Yeah, because that's yeah. also yeah. good for your yeah. gut, too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you cramp or something? Yeah, yeah. that works. Pickle juice, yeah. pickle yeah. juice. And, and coconut yes. water. Okay, coconut so water. Yeah. Coconut, water. coconut water. Coconut water is good. Water. Um, so um, we're now on the pasta right oh, now. Oh, oh, okay, pasta. okay, okay. Pasta. So what are we so doing here? We are on I page. just sauteed up um, garlic. Do you? Oh. It smells so good. Garlic, onions. I got some red onion in here. This is and on I've page 79. 79, and this is portobello mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And see this little steamer. I steam this off, um, and this is my broccoli. I love All it. ready to go. You want to take a piece and just try that? Mm. Isn't that good? That's delicious. Okay, you can take a little piece oh, of broccoli yeah, over there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. here you <laughs> have to go on, go on with that. So we maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, you or Rose, since you are the experts here and I'm just the chef. What is it when you add broccoli and, and I always use the stem because the stem is where a lot of the minerals are in, and people mm -hmm. pop the stem out and they don't use it. I use the whole thing, so the cap has a good flavor and texture, but the stem is where the minerals where are, the right. minerals are. So never take the stem out or chop them up and use them and throw them in your pasta too. So I just wanted to make sure I told everybody that. And then I'm sticking my broccoli in there. Okay, so what you're, doing, mm -hmm. you're doing a little bit of oil. We got Very some garlic and you can chopped see, up, some yes. red onion chopped up. Yep. You added the portobello mushroom slice. Yeah, we added I'm some broccoli that's already bit, been a little bit this. steamed. Ooh, I'm going to put my sun-dried tomatoes in here. Oh, Sun-dried tomatoes, the olives. Olives. Oh, my gosh. Can, are you, like, loving this? Mm -hmm. One of the nice things about this recipe is that because it's so flavorful, yeah. um, you could switch out the broccoli for a different vegetable you don't like as much yet. So like yeah. Brussels sprouts, if you don't like Brussels sprouts. And, and because yeah. it's got other familiar flavors, like, yeah. then it works. So I have got yeah. a different pasta here that we're using. So this is already, I'm adding the pasta, and this is a penne chickpea. It's gluten-free. Chickpea. Chickpea, yep. I'm going to do it right here, chickpea flour. Cool. I think that's the yeah. ingredient in there, it's chickpea. It's chickpea flour, yeah. And it's tasty. 
and um, it's getting a little more protein in there mm -hmm. and something different. It is a little bit more expensive. Oh, it might be a dollar more. But if you think about, the you're benefit, getting, right. there, there's like You'll four, be fuller, longer, like you're four, gonna feel better. You're gonna feel better craving, longer. Sleep it's better four night, servings, so it's, will be better. Yeah, yeah. it's 25 better. cents per serving more than regular. I mean, if you're going, oh, food's too expensive, I go, really? 25 cents? Yeah. Do you know how much it costs for um, type 2 diabetes medicine? A month, what it takes, and you can back me up on mm -hmm. this. When you start taking insulin injections, right. it's because you will gain weight from right. that. Yeah. It will Why put, it tell, gain weight. It actually makes you gain weight. So when people go, oh, I can handle my, my, I can eat this and I'll just give myself a little more insulin. I'm like, it's not calories. And they go, why am I hungry all the time? Because it's not being used right. for energy. You want to be keeping yourself insulin sensitive, mm -hmm. not insulin resistant. And real food will do that. Yes. And you can actually reverse, you can stop and reverse type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. just by what you're eating. Yeah. Just And blood pressure goes along with it. Yep. Don't forget fatty liver, too. Oh, yep. my gosh. Mm -hmm. Reverse it. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Okay, so I'm doing this. I'm going to turn this down. So these, so these are <laughs> these are all the so diseases. The, um, the tomatoes, the sun-dried sun tomatoes. tomatoes. I never oh, use yeah. sun-dried tomatoes in my cooking. I don't know why. But I right? This you never had them. So intense. Whoa. But I, I wanted to. Oh my god! I'm really excited like, yeah. for you. Yeah. It's like I want. It's like I, tart and sweet at the same time, but then also kind of roasty. Ooh, yeah. Really nice. I wanted to bring it back to. Prevention. Yes. And this is prevention. Right. And being an athlete, being a scholar, having children in the best possible physical condition right. to be successful in the world. Yeah. And when I see parents at the end of a uh, flag football bringing donuts, thinking they're loving their child with the sports drinks and donuts, I'm like, really? Really? There's it's, so many delicious real oh foods, God. and it's not that hard. You're doing it's, it while you're talking. I'm, you know what? <laughs> With my hands. Right. I'm in, okay. So I've got camelotta olives yep. that mm -hmm. I'm going to put in here, and it's going to bring all of these things as a chef are, are ways to awaken your palate mm -hmm. right. so that you can open up to not being afraid to eat things that are tart or things that are pungent, mm -hmm. or, or you know, and all of those things are so good for your mm -hmm. body, and they light up your, your hormones in a very positive way, because your body goes, I love this. Right. I love this. Give yeah, me more. Yeah, we're not asking anybody to eat stuff they don't like. It's learn how to no. fall in love with good food. Fall in love. There was one really interesting study a few years ago about tomatoes, and mm. they were looking at slightly younger than high school kids, and most of the kids in the study did not like tomatoes. They just didn't like the texture. They would eat tomato sauce, but they didn't like tomatoes. Right. So then what they did is they did knife classes with the kids, and they had them cut the tomatoes, <laughs> and if they did it themselves after <laughs> playing with knives, which is cool, um, they... I just put the Parmesan cheese. Uh-oh. Exactly. About twice as many of them would like tomatoes just from cutting it, just yes. from being involved in the okay. cooking. Okay. So I am... I am three years old. Yep. How long does it take to get me to change my palate? How many times do I have to taste something? Uh, it, it's different for different ages. Okay, before, but, okay. But, so okay. before they start to walk is feta the very cheese, easiest time. Oh yeah. Feta cheese. This is. And it, it takes six to ten times. But once they hit three, from three up, on average, it's eighty-nine times. But the good news is. Okay. There's several pieces of goodness. One is okay. you can start on the very next bite to fall in love with a new food. You don't have to eat a lot of it. Just try it once and then see. Maybe two days. Just one bite. Yeah. So if you don't like something, one bite yeah. and then another bite. And that's true for adults too, right? That's because true for we adults can too. all I've done change. that with the foods I don't like, I didn't like I as know, a kid. sardines. They're telling me I should try sardines and just the... I just have this image of my grandfather yeah, 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 with yeah. the cert, and I just, and he had mustard on it, and Ooh. it was like, it just did something. But I, I, can, I learned to like sardines when I was hiking. I was backpacking, and it was so hot, and I was so tired, and tried the sardine, and it tasted so good. 
<laughs> There's really something yeah. to be said for uh -huh. trying new things when you're hungry. Oh, right. That's I what like I do that. with my yep. son. I'll starve him all day, right? I uh -huh. won't give him any food, no snacks, right. nothing. And then, and then it, it's kind of like he knows now because I've, I've told him what, what I'm doing. Like right. finally, he's 12, right? And so he, he'll, he'll tell me, he's like, all right, mom, I'm ready to try a new food. I am starving. <laughs> so. All right, so here we go. So I'm bringing that to you. Okay. Um, but hungry, hungry, hungry is a great really time yeah. to okay. try a new wait, food. Wait, not wait. when you've just Bring had him a snack. Up. Come on over here. Mm -hmm. All right. He's yeah, called, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He's a little scared. This is the first time he's eating sun dried right. tomatoes. Oh, make, make, make sure I get that. Make sure I get that in. Get the sun dried tomato with the broccoli with a little bit of the pasta. That's like ooh. Yeah. That's it. I get a little bit of everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This the one. This is the one. This the one. Because mm -hmm. it's like, it's tart, but then it's it's got a little smoky. bit of the sweetness, yeah. it's a mm -hmm. little smoky, and then the olive is like this salty thing happening, and then the broccoli is like kind of bland but vibrant, and... It's you like know, whole, it's like reading a there, good novel. Everything I was it is. It is. <laughs> you, the more it's novels complex. you yeah. read, and instead of just, you know, mystery or romance, you read a good novel by a good writer, it expands your mind so that you're able to take in more of the world. Right. The same thing with food. Yeah. The more you expand the palate, yep. the more you're able to travel and you're able to expand your knowledge of the world and an appreciation yeah. for other cultures. And the more people learn to cook, the easier that is. The food tastes better if you're doing the cooking. And mm. eat my problem. There you, you go. But it's cook. not that hard. It's doable. Did you see how but we don't learn. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm taking it all in. And this salad, you can pick whatever you happen to have. It's, 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 but isn't that good right. avocado? Throw it in yeah. with avocado. Oh, yeah. 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 You know what? They may have you on the team. Be the yeah, there you go. Yeah, because <laughs> I bring the football team in here. I have them cooking, and they cook it. And then they eat it. And they come in here, the kids are always coming in here going, Chef Cindy, what do you got to cook? I go, come on in, let me see what you can cook. We cook together, I'll bring things That's great. out. And you like to be able to have children have, see it, like, what did you say? You show one? Oh, see one, do one, teach one. Exactly. Yeah, school, yeah. And then we have the kids teach the younger kids to and do it. And it works. I, I saw a six-year-old kid for his physical this week, and he was so proud because he learned how to make omelets. And he, he loves them now because he and was involved yeah, in the same cooking. Same with my son. Yeah, yeah. He's in a cooking, cooking class at school. Yeah. And he came home. I've been trying to get this kid to eat pesto for months. And he, no, 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 no. He made it at school. That'll do it. Yeah. That's okay. it. I was yeah. like, so we have started. to bring... Home it's pure back. pressure. It's yeah. pure it's pressure. Pure, 100 percent. Yes. You got to do it without easy. your parent yeah. in the room. Mm -hmm. right. I can yeah. try, but like I, I am nothing yeah. compared to the, you know, the pressure of the peers. And then one of the things I love about Mount Diablo is your garden out back. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Oh. And if kids yeah. grow food and yeah. then help with the cooking, then you really fall in love. Solid. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's awesome. So I'm going to ask you um, a question, and you can chime in. I'm going to add what. You know, you saw what we have. Maybe pull over those crackers and the hard-boiled egg. Okay. What is it that you got a big game tonight? Okay, and it's 12 o'clock. What would, out of everything that you ate, what would your coach or what would you say you would eat before the game? Before the game, hmm. definitely. Well, I'm bring this back in. in so you have that for this is our breakfast right here. But but right before the game, we'll probably get like some you know some oranges or yeah. apples or something like that. Uh, I like the fruit more than anything. I always prefer the fruits Fast before energy. the game. Yeah. yeah, so banana, you know, stuff. Uh huh. Like that. Before the game, before and then the game. how much water are you drinking game day? Before? Game day, Whew. I gotta stay. So it depends on where we're playing at. Now, if we're playing in Tallahassee, Florida, where it's real humid and stuff, I make sure I get a lot of water in me. Um, it all really depends on where we're playing at, and even even the cold games. Like we played at a uh, Yankee Stadium against Notre Dame, and it was mm -hmm. very cold. But I made sure I stay hydrated because. You don't really feel the cold as much, but when you're playing, so. Okay, so just after the game, what are you going to eat right after a game? Right, at, right after a game. Hmm. Well, for dinner, after a workout. After for dinner, we definitely have this pasta. This is this is what we always have, but not like this. It's quite a, little, a lot different, way better <laughs> too. So yeah, we have some pasta or something like that, uh -huh. and some uh, proteins like 
we probably have some steak and stuff like that. But you mentioned earlier that the peas had the protein yeah. in it, and that's I never knew that. So that's like something that I'm going to try to yeah, implement. Yeah, throw it in the too. pasta. Mm -hmm. Throw chicken and peas and cheese and whatever. Broccoli and spinach have a lot of protein Broccoli. too. Most right. things, yeah. most mm -hmm. things that grow right. have some protein. Yeah, it's mostly yeah. the processed foods that will pull that out. I right. know. Right. So if you're just eating real food, how about hard-boiled eggs? Is hard that like, eggs. like, like, if, if you could say, hey, coach, keep in the refrigerator at school. If you're just a high school athlete and you're practicing or got a baseball game or a basketball game, hey, coach. Make sure that this is in the refrigerator before practice, mm -hmm. and can I have this in the refrigerator after practice? And it had to be things that were quick. What things would you suggest the coach have in that refrigerator? That's a good question. That is a great question. Like I said, the things that we already have, like I said, we always have the fruits out there. And the hardware, that's a new thing, so that's something that I think would be good to uh, implement into that. Yeah, like after you work out, you right. have a, like a string cheese. Right. You know, um, nut butters might be good right. on crackers or on apples or something like that. Yeah, because sometimes they don't really even focus on like a food. They want us to fill us up with like a muscle milk and uh -huh. proteins and right. things like that. So, do they right. need that? Yeah. Do yeah. they need yeah. the yeah. muscle milk so, and stuff? So protein afterwards is a really nice thing to do. Right. But it doesn't need to be muscle milk. Right. Uh, an egg would be a great way to do it. Right. For so me, with good. eggs, I happen to like them a lot better if they're a little warm. So we have in our office one of those little egg makers that you just put in a bunch of hard-boiled eggs, uh -huh. hit a button, and they come out perfect every time. Uh, and <laughs> Whoa. We have it at home, too. Okay, really where, nice. where can you get that? Um, can you get it on Amazon? Yeah, you can, can you get, get it on Amazon. Okay, so you would get the little egg hard-boiled Hard, Yeah. And it does and six super, eggs. super, super easy, yeah. Okay, coaches, we're going to put that on the list. I think that would be good. They have raw eggs in Don't there. Don't yeah. put a uh, whole egg in the microwave, though. Right. Just, not in the this microwave. This is a microwave. This, this, no, this I know, up. but yeah. I tried oh, that yeah. one time. Uh oh. <laughs> oh yeah, that well, even this they one. Explode! It's oh. wild. Yeah. <laughs> and this one, there's a thing you you touch the egg yeah. on the way in yeah, on a needle a to make a tiny machine. hole. So mm, that's nice. Oh, that's yeah. very good. <laughs> okay. Um, this has been wonderful. I just want to lay this. I was going to make one more pasta, um, but I'm going to make that. I'm going to show you how to make this Ooh. later, okay? And this is with, I've got a um, uh, the red, lentil. red lentil rotel, and then I got um, peas and broccoli and zucchini and onion that came frozen. So there are products yeah, that are IQF frozen. Up in the so frozen. yeah, you just keep That's it in the okay. freezer. Mm -hmm. Boil this quick. up. You can keep this. You can boil your pasta up ahead of time and keep it in the freezer. Bring it out. Just bam, bam, and put some oil on that. And if you've got you know cheeses or whatever, you mix it together. You can always get a really good, easy mm -hmm. pasta. So these two things together. So we have a nice. Oh, that salad looks beautiful. We have our pasta all done. Okay, crew, you guys are going to eat this and everybody's mm -hmm. going to taste it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have our oatmeal here. <laughs> and I'm just going to put this in this bowl because this looks like amazing. And another thing I do with my oatmeal is I make it the night before. You can make it a few days ahead of time mm -hmm. and just leave it in a tub and then just take it out. You don't and even just, have to cook it. She's saying you have to just put like the almond milk and the oats and the chia kind of seed soak, yeah. or whatever yeah. and just put it in the fridge and let it soak with some nuts and seeds and cinnamon and fruit. It's Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, what we're encouraging you to do is Think outside of the box mm -hmm. for real food. Yep. You know, use your garden. Even if you can just, if you live in an apartment, put some buckets on, on, the, on the trellis or on your back porch and you can grow things there or in your, in your window. Use your farmer's market. And some people have um, SNAP. Mm -hmm. They have the, um, you know, where they're getting assistance because, you know, it's expensive with children. And so sure. some families qualify for that. And you may not be aware of Pacific Coast Farmers Market. If you have $50 worth of, of SNAP certificates, mm -hmm. you can get $100 worth. Wow, that's they great. They give you two, they double it. So you can go to the farmer's market and you can really, it's cheaper to get it at the farmer's that's market fantastic. than in the grocery store. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yes. And it, you're supporting the farmers, right. which is supporting the environment. And it's really important when we take care of this, 
we're really taking care of that. Right. And the less processed food that we're shipping in and the more that we're eating local, mm -hmm. we're better, the planet's better, and um, and it's, it's a win-win for all of us. Oh, and it's yeah. delicious. And travel. Get a cookbook. Travel. I, I want to travel in my mouth. You know, yeah. I'm always having a party here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just came to We're California. We're going to Mexico tonight. Just, We're going to Italy tomorrow night. Oh, you know what that is? I like it. Get a cookbook. And yeah, take sure. a class. There's so many online teachers now mm -hmm. that well you can just follow right through with them um, we do things in our home that we'll be filming and then we'll be posting all of these meals we're going to be taking you through slowly and it'll be on our website um, if so if you go to farm to taste on youtube you can follow us or cindygershen.com is the website and rose and i are posted there you're going to see dr green buy this book order this book if you love someone that's pregnant going to be pregnant get this is the best gift that you can give them because you're going to give them the gift of a healthy child and a healthy body and i want to thank you so much oh, for you, coming Cindy. out so good and this has been you. so good it's so good and you got to come back you got to help us we're going to be changing things and alan thank you so much no for coming over and talking to us and helping us help children to be healthier. But and you dissolve the myth, right? There's a the myth, myth that right. athletes somehow need to, you know, put a bunch of stuff in their bodies so that they can perform in, at their peak. And you're standing right. here saying, not true. Not true, yeah. Not true. Yeah, right. so. Thank you for yes. teaching me. And this is all things that I'm going to try to, you know, learn. We're going back on the YouTube, seeing you do it here. Right. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Okay. Thank you so much for coming to visit us. I think next time we have a dentist coming in, our dentist, Sarah Davidson, and awesome. she's going to be talking how eating real food helps your teeth, mm -hmm. your gums, which is helping your whole entire body. Mm -hmm. You gotta keep your, your whole self together. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming and, and eating and sharing and, and I hope you learned something new here with us. And don't forget the book. Don't forget the book. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.